Testing, testing. Okay. Okay, that seems to be working. So it's freaking, <laughs> it's either the service I'm using or it's Facebook. But well, this is the second time I've actually uh, live streamed. Just give me a second because I'm also concurrently streaming on YouTube at the moment. So let me just delete the video that just, that I just trashed. Hey, AC Johnson, how you doing? It's either Facebook or it's, I'm using this third party service called Restream. And if you want to be able to stream to Facebook using Restream.io, you have to pay like a monthly subscription fee. So I figured, what the hell, let's do it. And um, it created like all the static. And it's the second time I've had the same problem um, using Restream streaming to Facebook. So the static sticks around for like 15 minutes, but obviously we can't we can't stick around for that long. But let's see. And the funny thing is that the YouTube stream doesn't come up. Mr. Al, how you doing? How's Noah? Noah's good. <laughs> he's uh, at childcare today, so he's happy. He's his, his favorite uh, place on earth, I think. Um, <laughs> hey, Sammy, how you doing? But I'll show you what I did. Noah, Noah, Noah has been like uh, being a real mess, like feeding himself, right? So it's always either like you kind of like sacrifice the clothes he's wearing because when he's eating, because he helps himself to his sandwiches and he likes to get his fingers all sticky with all the sandwich filling and then he'll wipe it all over himself. So this morning, this morning I got like one of these shopping bags, grocery bags, cut the bottom off of it and let him wear it as a bib <laughs> which I think is a pretty clever idea guys so he was advertising this Big W Big W is one of the it's kind of like a Kmart here in Australia so he was wearing a Big W apron slash bib this morning <laughs> anyway <coughs> and how's everyone? Tell me where you're watching from. See Johnson, I haven't seen you around. I'll, I'll, you usually come around and say hello, a quick hello, and then, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Noah's uh, at his favorite place in the world, at childcare this morning. His, his childcare is really nice. It's really nurturing, you know. Um, so the kids are taught to kind of know that he's different. Well, not that he's different, but to look out for him. So they're all very, very sweet towards him. When he arrives, they'll kind of, um, you know, help him like guide him to the swings or to the slides or whatever and help him climb up this and that. His preschool is a little bit uh, less nurturing, you know, his preschool is kind of like let the kids do their own thing and the kids there are quite mean. I, I, I notice it maybe because I'm a parent, right? But then you don't want to, you don't want to be one of those annoying parents who try and like, you know, uh, yeah kind of like get on the uh, teachers backs or whatever but the kids there at preschool are a little bit meaner there's a couple of nice ones but most of the others they 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 treat him quite badly like they won't play with him they'll ignore him and they'll <laughs> sort of thing and in fact last week when i went to pick him up at preschool one of his uh classmates was sitting next to him he was his classmate was talking to me, a little kid, a little five-year-old kid, saying, oh, Noah is stupid, Noah is annoying, and whatever. And so, what can you say, you know, because he's a kid and you can't, like, lay into the kid or whatever. Still, uh, watching from New Zealand in my living room on a, on a street. Why are you on a street? <laughs> hey, Kettle, how you doing? <laughs> Let me just uh, turn off my night bot. Hang on a sec. Uh, the, uh, so today I'm making nasi lemak. Nasi lemak is a, literally it means, well, it kind of means like fatty rice or creamy rice. Lemak means like rich or creamy or fatty or something. It basically refers to the coconut cream that it gets cooked with. All right. Nasi just means rice in Malay. All right. Um, so this, but it's not just that. It, it, it can mean two things. It can just mean rice that's been cooked with coconut milk or coconut cream. Or it can mean a meal as well that consists of that rice plus a number of like accompaniments sort of thing. So we're going to do that. And like if you, you can have it really basic in Malaysia, you can have it like with just the coconut rice with a couple of slices of cucumber, maybe a boil or 
uh, fried egg or something like that and what's called a sambal right the sambal is usually like a chili condiments that's got like a dried anchovies fried dried anchovies with it so that's kind of like a basic nasi lemak then you can get a little bit like fancy you can add some pickles we're not going to attempt the pickles today um and then you'll have curries okay you can maybe have like fried chicken or something like that you know and just kind of like make it bigger and nicer sort of thing so we're actually going to uh, make a fish curry because i've got some fish left over today um don't worry jackie <laughs> yeah why are you on the street what's going on <laughs> let me just go on to <coughs> <coughs> tonight, but Aisha is one of my regulars. She's one of my subs, and she's apparently she's been sick for three months. I can't believe it. And I have like she's got the same thing I have. She's got this lingering cold, this lingering cough. Um, but now she's actually going for serious tests. So it sounds pretty full on. I'm not that sick, but I've just got this really annoying cough going around at the moment. So website Discord. Okay, yeah, that should be all right. <coughs> <laughs> hey, Edge of Night, how you doing? <laughs> okay, so we're doing nasi lemak. Uh, I'm going to be using a couple of, uh, well, I'm going to be using one ingredient that's not released on the market yet, so I'm not going to tell you the brand, all right? <laughs> this is sent to me every now and then I get sent stuff to test it out. Um, so I've no idea how it's going to work, but this is basically, these are little sachets of coconut powder, all right? Like I said, it's not released on the market yet, so I'm not going to show you the brand. And in fact, if they do decide to go with it, they'll rebrand it with their own brand, okay? So I've got my usual tub of coconut cream over here. I tend to like to use coconut cream over coconut milk simply because it's richer and creamier. In theory, it means you use less of it, all right? Um, but there are other brands out there uh, which may be more aromatic. Sometimes you find a coconut cream in a pack or in a can, um, just don't really have that same nice, rich aroma that you get from fresh coconuts, right? And I'm told to try one other brand, which I haven't yet, so I might. But this is kind of like, this is a, a, a popular brand among restaurants sort of thing. So, cause I get all my supplies from a place that supplies restaurants. So when I say I want coconut cream, this is the default brand they send me and it's from Indonesia. Okay. But yeah, like I said, I'm gonna cook the rice. So I'm going to be using some of this, uh, these couple of like sachets of coconut powder. Okay. If they work out, you know, I'll be able to give my feedback if I think they're, uh, you know, We'll see anyway. It's handy to have like coconut powder anyway. And I have actually seen coconut powder. I have used coconut powder sometimes. I don't know how this is different from the others, but maybe it's got nice, nicer flavor or whatever, but it's straight from Malaysia. So it's usually a good sign how much stuff comes with the coconut. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. <coughs> Drink as well. Hey, Cyan, how you doing? Um, in fact, like one of like the things they teach us at school in Malaysia uh, I remember there was one lesson, I forget whether it was in primary school, you know, that you, you actually have a lesson where you learn about a coconut tree and everything that you can do with it. So being Asian, you see, we use all parts of the tree. We use like, you know, they'll, they'll show you all the trunk you can use to build bridges or build furniture or something like that. The leaves we actually use, um, you can use it to make brooms, right? And you can use the leaves to weave into little baskets that you use that you stuff with rice and then you boil it and you get like what's called compressed rice that you serve with, um, um, you see, that you serve with uh, satay and then of course the coconut like if it's a green coconut you can uh, drink the juice right and then there's the gelatinous flesh that we eat a lot of westerners when they sell coconut juice in the whole coconut coconut all they do is drill a tiny hole at the top and you drink it and then they toss it out to us you know if you go to asia you go to southeast asia if you order like a coconut drink from a street side store they attack the coconut with a big parang all right parang is like a malay uh virtually like a sword sort of thing and you actually carve out like a triangular shape at the top of the coconut um, that's big enough for you to fit a spoon into so you can scrape out the flesh and the flesh is really really nice Okay, so when the coconut gets old it comes like brown and husky and the water content in the coconut gets reduced And then it's, it's no longer potable. It's just like it tastes sour So it's not particularly nice after that, but uh, in return the coconut jelly actually becomes hardened and it becomes thicker and that's the flesh that's the coconut flesh that you use to extract coconut milk coconut cream and creamed coconut from so 
yeah, it's very complicated. It's not complicated, but it just shows you there's a lot of different ways you can use it. Is that when you learn the coconut song? What's the coconut song? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Okay, so um, first off, we're going to cook the rice and I'm going to use the rice cooker slash my pressure cooker over here. It functions as a rice cooker as well. We Asians are very big on rice cookers, all right, sort of thing. Um, like you grow up in Asia, every every house has a, an electric rice cooker, okay? If you're, if you're born in the last, uh, you yeah, know, whatever, 50 years. You will know a rice cooker, okay? You always talk about steamed rice in cook in cookbooks or in restaurant menus or whatever. But in reality, we Asians don't generally steam the rice that we eat, okay? We cook it in the rice cooker, which is essentially boiled rice, okay? So, and how much water you use for it? I never measure it because you've been doing it your whole life. You don't even think about it, okay? And different batches of rice, you know, different types of rice take different amounts of water. But also different batches of rice can take different amounts of water as well. So there's a little bit of give. Sometimes you put, you know, sometimes it may taste a little bit more, um, yeah, more dry. And other times it might turn out a little soggy. But yeah, it's all part of like, you know, experimenting, okay? So it's the rice, and if you were cooking coconut rice, right, what I would do is actually, um, when, you, when you put coconut cream in with your rice to cook it, because you're boiling it, and sometimes you might, if you don't have a rice cooker, you would boil it on the stove, uh, the coconut cream or coconut milk will tend to burn the base of your rice, okay? So the way around it is I would actually put just straight water in there to start with, okay, but less water than you usually would. And then halfway through the cooking process, I would then open it up and then add um, coconut cream to it. Um, in fact, you know, having set the whole like we done steamed rice, I used to steam it in my restaurant, okay, just because steamed rice, <coughs> it does turn out like looser, like, you know, sort of thing, whereas boiled rice can sometimes be a little bit uh, gluggy, okay, so. Um, Let's, because we're using coconut powder, powder today, what I'm going to do uh, is use the normal amount of water, right? Because the powder isn't going to provide any moisture in the rice. I'm going to use the normal amount of water. I'm going to put some salt in it, which we usually do when we're cooking coconut rice. Um, the other ingredient we usually put in is something called pandan, all right? Uh, but in leaf form, okay? I've shown you guys the pandan leaf before. They, look, they grow wild all, all over in Malaysia. Um, probably the rest of Southeast Asia as well, um, but they just look like long blades, okay? And then you can use it in a variety of different ways, but if you're using it in rice, you want the leaf, and you basically we would tie it in a knot, in a bunch, and then throw it in with the rice, and it will give it a slight green tinge, right? Uh, in your rice, which is fine, you just throw, uh, mix it around at the end of it, toss out the uh, bunch of pandan leaves at the end of it and it'll just add a nice little like very very subtle aroma if you don't have it you can leave it out but we, what we don't do um, when we're cooking nasi lemak is actually use the pandan extract which I've shown you before as well because that will just turn your rice straight out green all right um, though having said that you know I've seen pandan extract used in dessert rice before okay dessert rice as in sticky rice sort of thing um, like um, sticky rice and mango um, I've seen them serve it with like green colored rice and that's from the pandan extract okay the pandan extract would be basically um, you know the pandan juice extracted from the leaves so it's quite a you know it can be quite a strong green color I'm now drinking coconut water straight oh that's nice <laughs> I love coconut water you know um, but in all honesty so yeah this will be about enough water it's about equal amounts water and rice i would guess yeah um when i was i mean i'm just cooking for me and nova so there's not a huge amount of rice but when i used to help my mom in the kitchen we had a family like you know eight kids plus two adults so you're cooking a family of 10 you cook quite a lot of rice but uh you used to measure the water level which would be up to your we we use the um basically the the, the what do you call it <laughs> yeah you, you use your the, the lines on your on your fingers right to measure how much water to go into it okay so um you want to take it up to the first on like basically have your finger on the surface of the rice and then take the water up to the first 
um, joint, okay? I'm, try I'm struggling to figure out the words because I'm trying to stifle my coughs at the same time. Okay, so about that, and I'm going to put a pinch of salt in here. Okay, and the, because I'm using the coconut powder, I'll put the coconut powder in at the end, all right? Um, so, and then we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so uh, in case you're wondering, that's my optimum induction pressure cook pro which is a pressure cooker it's like the american instant pot but it's an induction it runs on induction technology so it's better <laughs> but yeah one of the things it does is that it cooks rice for you okay um got that and the other thing a couple a couple of things i want to do uh, i want to make the sambal for the to go with the rice and i want to do uh, uh, uh the the sambal i'm going to make is going to be uh, is going to consist of this ikan bilis the dried anchovies i'll just show you okay so these are what we call uh, ikan bilis and if you uh, you're, you're probably unlikely to find this at your local supermarket, all right? Um, but this is what they look like. We call them like, uh, like I said, ikan bilis, but uh, in uh, most of the time, the English translation is dried anchovies. Okay, I don't know if they're actual anchovies because you see Italian anchovies would be longer sort of thing. All right, but these are usually labeled dried anchovies. Sometimes they're labeled dried white bait as well. Okay, um, and. Uh, you should be able to find them uh, either on the shelves at your local Asian grocery store or in the refrigerator, depending on the variety you get. All right, this one I get is um, has to be refrigerated, so I have to buy it. I have to uh, dig around in the refrigerated section because they do tend to get go moldy. I guess it depends on the moisture content in them. All right, but this one is actually from Vietnam, right? Um, even though this dish I'm making is actually Malaysian, there's a lot of crossovers between Malaysia. Um, and it's surrounding, you know, it's neighboring countries sort of thing. So uh, Vietnam is a good bet as far as uh, origin of ingredients. If you're looking for things like ikan bilis, if you're looking for like palm sugar and that sort of stuff, all right. Um, <coughs> um, and also the other thing I'm going to mention as well that for whatever reason, the Vietnamese version is uh, cheaper. <laughs> That's why I buy it, you see. It's cheaper than the ones from uh, other countries. So, I'm just gonna do a little bit more because I really like eating this, okay? So what you wanna do is actually just rinse it and just to remove some of the, you know, whatever gritty residue there is with it. Okay, so just Toss it quickly with some water and then strain it out. Nothing major, okay? And yet, the, uh, growing up as a kid in Malaysia, when we drank coconut water, <coughs> and it must just be my part of Malaysia, but as kids, when we drank coconut water, um, straight from coconuts, what they used to do was um, what what they used to do was um, actually add sugar syrup to the coconut. Um, so when I first came to Australia, I was really used to drinking sweetened coconut uh, water. Um, so when the whole craze about drinking, co like you know, those packet coconut water as a health drink thing came out to me. They tasted flavorless because it felt to me like they needed sugar, you know, sugar syrup in them. But uh, and then I speak to other Malaysians and they say no, it was always drunk straight. So there you go. Um, okay, so there's this here, and what I want to do is actually just uh, fry it up. I just want to crisp it up. So I'm just gonna toss it in a little bit of oil, and then I'll throw it in the air fryer. You can alternatively um, actually deep fry this, or you can just um, pan fry it with like a few tablespoons of oil all right 
but this is one of those things to me that lend themselves um, to being cooked in the air fryer really well because um, anytime you fry up the ikan bilis because they're quite um, they've got quite a lot of salt and they're fishy as well any oil that you use to cook them in invariably gets like you can't really reuse it because it's quite strong flavored all right so whereas in the air fryer you just want like a couple of tablespoons of oil tossed through it just mix it in right and then you air fry it till it's crispy and in all honesty for this particular version of the ikan bilis sambal I, I used to do a different version at my restaurant but um, I prefer this version that I'm making now which is uh, my mom's recipe um, this version that I'm making it doesn't have to stay crispy okay I'm just crisping it up because I'm cooking it as such all right so so you can just actually just saute it in a, in a frying pan with a little bit of oil as well okay so let's toss this in and by the way last uh, Saturday night we had the community um, campfire chat thing and we drew for a Rode microphone and a Lenovo mini speaker and they were won respectively by Cookie it's one of my regulars and <coughs> and um, and Swill who was a new person uh, who watched on Saturday night so congratulations to them both <coughs> okay got that now um, the other thing is I want to like I said I want to cook up the sauce that goes with the ikan bilis and I also want to make some fish curry as well um, I don't actually have a lot of chili around and also I want to make it a little bit mild as well because Noah's going to be eating it so the other point of uh, experimentation today is that I'm going to use some paprika in lieu of chili powder all right I'm gonna I'll, pro, I'll throw in a little bit of chili powder in lieu of chili powder and, and dried chili and, and um, chili paste and all that sort of stuff I'm gonna use a mixture of uh, paprika okay and also a mixture a little bit of um, crushed chili powder all right the crushed chili powder I've got here is very very uh, very very chili hot right so I'm just gonna use a little bit of it but the rest of it hopefully the paprika will actually work quite well with that did you give away all the microphones already or there's more there's more there's about five more <laughs> so you're still in with a chance <laughs> Okay, I need um, I need fresh onion. Okay, and I need some garlic. And um, with the Saturday night like campfire, if you guys have uh, if you guys are familiar with it, that's where I just share stories that other people have submitted or stories I found either in books or online. Um, but uh, for the first time last Saturday, the because we usually have music requests as well. For the first time last Saturday, it was decided that the music was just too like too loud in spite of the volume being reduced right down to the absolute minimum so we ended up with no music for the second half of the broadcast hey Lane Callan thanks for following um, so from now on I think moving forward unless someone has a solution for how to turn the music right down um, which I haven't figured out yet <laughs> but then again I'm using Nightbot to play the music all right so uh, Nightbot is meant to be a beta um, release so it may be a night bot thing or it may be that my integration of it is done wrong okay <laughs> so maybe there's other ways to control the volume uh, let me throw this out okay I want to just mince the garlic and with the fish I just want to show you it's Semi frozen, but hopefully, semi. You can turn it down on Nightbot. I did that. I had it down to like the absolute minimum volume, which is one. Um, but I don't know if this uh, because the way I have it set up is I have Nightbot, the auto DJ page, open on my Chrome browser. 
um, and just playing in the background, just hitting play. I don't know if there's meant to be a different way to integrate it into my live stream, um, but I had the, uh, the volume right down to one uh, the other night, and it was still too loud according to other people watching, and the, YouTube, the volume on the YouTube player was down to the absolute minimum sort of thing, and it was still too loud, so we got frustrated and we gave up. Okay, so this is the fish. It looks really trashy because it was in the freezer. And this, I believe, is uh, silver perch. Okay, I meant to steam it, but it's been sitting in my freezer for a few weeks. But you're playing the music through OBS on, on your speakers, on my speakers. Should I be playing them through, uh, well, I use XSplit. Should I be playing them through XSplit or? <coughs> See, Sammy's a pro. <laughs> Sammy's been live streaming for much, much longer than I have. <laughs> and so I'm using this. By the way, Sammy, has your t-shirt arrived yet? So I'm just mincing this in my Optimum Thermo Cook, right? So it doubles up. It works as a food processor, blender, and also it cooks for you if you want to, okay? Not yet, really, huh? Because um, Devlog's got their. Okay, I need to mince it just a touch more, huh? Let me know if it doesn't arrive by the end of this week. See, I sent your parcel because it was a, uh, it was just a T-shirt. I sent it via regular email um, about a week, uh, just over a week ago, <coughs> like maybe Friday, like uh, not this last Friday, but the one before. Um, but with DevLogs, I sent it at the same time, but with DevLogs, I used a special like tracking service because of the microphone, um, and DevLogs got there, so damn, what a bummer if it doesn't show up. <coughs> Poke Master, how you doing? Making some lunch, yeah, sorta. Uh, I'll send you some links to help you. Oh, okay, sure, no worries, cool. Okay, so minced garlic. So, Postmaster, have you finished your uh, assignment yet? <laughs> and I'm really annoyed that I paid a subscription service for freaking Restream IO to be able to stream to Facebook and only to get this really, really bad static. I did it like about. Um, two weeks ago for a client, because the, but the client had their own Restream I.O. account, and we were getting really bad static for about uh, 10, 10 minutes or so, and didn't realize what was causing it. But now that I've done exactly the same, and I'm getting static as well. The culprit is either Facebook, like trying to multi-stream to Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch in my case, or it's restream causing the uh, the static. One more exam to go. What's what's that on? Okay, so with the onion, I'm going to actually just slice it up, right? For this particular dish, it's sliced onion. Okay, well, it's a mixture of pureed and sliced onion. So um, I've only got three onions, so I'm going to actually. What am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to slice one and puree two. Physics. Ah, okay. Yeah, physics is my, probably my least favorite of all the sciences. When you're in Malaysia, well, 
back in my day anyway. It's probably changed by now. You basically get like automatically allocated into which like when you pass the, when you're past year nine, when you go into year ten, you're automatically allocated into which what they call the stream that you're going to um, be studying, right? Um, and basically the <laughs> the smart kids are automatically allocated the science stream and the you know the, the ones who are not so academic are allocated what they call the art stream right so all of us the smart ones obviously I'm smart <laughs> all of us smart ones had to study all the science subjects all right so the art stream will be studying like you know like art and and um, what did they do? <laughs> I don't even know. Um, history and that sort of stuff. This knife is terrible. Um, yeah, and geography, for whatever reason, fell into the art stream. <clears throat> and the smart ones all automatically had to do... Uh, well, unless, I think you can actually ask to change, but it's a bit of a, you know... Because of the like correlation with academic performance, if you're in the art stream, the automatic assumption is that you know you didn't do very well in your studies, right? So if you if you were smart but still wanted to do the art stream, you'll basically be lumped into that kind of like um, yeah, <laughs> that group. You know what I mean? We can pick what we want. Just the smart kids get first choice to hard subjects. Ah, okay, right, right, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, we had to do all, all the sciences. You can't say, I don't want to do physics because I don't like it. So we had to do French, uh, yeah. Biochemistry, physics. I need knives, guys. Anyone can hook me up. <laughs> I'm a little bit too busy with my own things to look for sponsors. Oh yeah, before I go on, uh, quick shout out. I, I gotta watch the timestamp here when I do the shout out. Okay, what are we into? Oh, it doesn't tell me. <coughs> quick shout out to Lenovo Australia for the laptops I use for my live streaming. I'm using a Lenovo IdeaPad Y700, which is a gaming laptop. And also to Rode microphones for the microphones I use for my live streaming. I am using a, uh, it's a USB like podcasting, like, professional podcasting microphone, right? And also uh, to both companies for the prizes I've been hang handing out for my giveaways, guys. So I still got a bunch of them to give out. Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out when to do it. Saturday night, I had to actually, I'm running really, really low on my um, data uh, allowance. I'm only just, just over a week into my monthly data allocation, I'm al already like about halfway through my data usage. So, <coughs> so I'm going to either have to find uh, more data somewhere, or I'm going to have to shorten my live streams. You need some ISP to sponsor you. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do. I badly need ISPs, except I've kind of burned bridges with Telstra. I, I use Telstra and I pay, you don't want to know how much, I pay hundreds of dollars to Telstra for my uh, combination of my, uh, of my like home internet, which is ADSL, my phone, um, and also with my mobile data, all right? So I pay, already paid them hundreds of dollars, but they stuffed me around enough that I've blogged about the, how they've stuffed me around. Um, quite a few times now so I don't think they necessarily want to be my sponsors now <laughs> and Optus Optus is oversubscribed in my area apparently so I'm told but I actually tried to switch to Optus with my mobile data and um, and I was only getting like a, as low as two megabits per second um, download and upload which is terrible and 
then like I don't know whether they got tired of trying to like uh, nail down the problem but ultimately they just say look we'll give you your money back it sounds like uh, Optus is oversubscribed in your area it's just basically too many people trying to connect to the same uh, tower so I wasn't gonna get the speeds I need to be able to live stream so there you go and in Australia it's really just Optus and Telstra so I might have to leave the country <laughs> Optus, who sponsor her? We got a good NBN and Fern Optus. You just need NBN. Optus sponsors who? Poke Master, you're down south, right? Where? Wait, 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 wait or you're in? Uh, you're out west. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I don't, like, you know, for whatever reason, NBN is kind of like being like skipping out our entire suburb. It's not even on the rollout uh, schedule yet. So guys, I need, I need internet. <laughs> I need an ISP sponsor and I need a knife sponsor. All right. Put the word out, please, if you don't mind. Okay, so some sliced up and some just cut into chunks, the chunky ones I'm going to actually mince. So let's scrape the, uh, uh, the garlic out. And do the... Uh, oh cool, right here. I'll talk to you later, Pokemaster. Good luck with your exam. Okay, so that's in there. Okay, so this is minced stuff, and I'm going to use some of it in my fish curry and some in the uh, dried anchovy sambal, okay? That aside. You know what I forgot? Oleg, thanks for following. You know what I forgot? I should have actually thrown in the eggs because you just want some boiled eggs to go with your um, meal later on. And a lot of the time we Asians, if we want hard boiled eggs, we just stick the eggs in with the, the uh, rice that we're cooking and it'll be done. It'll be embedded in the rice, right? Um, and then it'll be done the same time as well. So, uh, minced onion. <coughs> and let's bring out the stove. use for the curry for the sambal let's try this Crunchy! Lucky I remember the stream. Why aren't you at school? Hey, Amber! <laughs> yeah, Crunchy, why aren't you at school? <laughs> Alright, so let's uh, fry up the sambal. Like I said, I'm going to use some sweet paprika it says here alright I'm told by my grocery supplier that a lot of restaurants buy this sweet paprika I don't know how they use it but he supplies Asian restaurants okay so I'm assuming when I had my restaurant I didn't I never used paprika um, I'm assuming they use it in lieu of chili in case the chili is too hot and they want to generate the the aesthetic of like um, you know of chili without the heat I'm still very sick. Ah. When were you sick? I didn't even know you were sick. See, you've been gone too long. Um, you missed Saturday night, Crunchy. There was only like six people in the drawer. 
and um, let's yeah. <laughs> And Devlock won yet again, but Devlock was too kind and passed up on the prize and asked for a redraw for so somebody else could win. Okay, so this here. Just a minced onion. I'm gonna throw in some garlic as well. So, like I said, first up we're making um, making the sambal. Okay, so a fair bit of garlic. I'm just dry frying it. I'm gonna toss in some of the paprika. It's my first time using paprika this way. All right. So I bought this big giant bag of paprika and never used it. I just bought it because I thought it'd be a good idea if ever I needed to replace chili with it. But in all honesty, the color isn't as red as I would have liked. It's actually more brown than anything else. So let's throw in some oil. Okay. I'm going to add some real chili to this, okay? Real chili as in chili, chili, like there's chili, crushed chili from Thailand, which is super, super hot. Um, ole, crunchy, just drink water and tea or coffee helps more than anything and eat lemon, it helps. Really? <laughs> there you go, crunchy, tea and coffee. Caffeine kills your flu virus. Okay. So you really want to fry this till the onion is browned and the oil separates. That's what they always say, but like basically you don't want to just soften the onion, all right? You want to brown it. Okay. And let's check on the anchovies. Okay, so this is 15 minutes in the air fryer and it's done. I'm going to scrape it out. Not tea or coffee, they drain your body. body. Not, oh, not tea or coffee. <laughs> you say drink tea or coffee. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, just the rice, right? And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm, I'm using these sachets of coconut powder. Usually I would cook this with coconut milk or coconut cream, but like I said, they do tend to burn your, burn the base of your. Uh, whatever it is you're cooking your rice in, okay, because of the, because coconut cream is quite thick. And when I used to do it in my restaurant, I used to actually not boil the rice, but I would steam it in the steamer, okay, just to prevent the burning. But steaming rice can it will take three times longer than boiling rice. Okay, so I'll put the coconut powder in there. Let's just mix this in. And if it works, that'll be a great, like, that'll be a good reason to buy, like, uh, powdered coconut milk. Because then you can circumvent the whole 
worry about your rice burning and I'm burning this in the meantime while I'm doing this. Okay, I'll just turn that off. Let me just taste test it. Okay. Okay, so your rice is still soft and fluffy, but it's now coconutty. I'm contemplating if I should put another packet in there. I think it's okay now. Mm, yeah, I could use another pack, or half a pack anyway. So again, this is what it looks like. It's like not on the market yet, okay? Not here in Australia yet. Um, but it's basically something that one of my business associates is thinking of bringing into Australia and they wanted me to test it out. I don't know how much it's sachet like this will cost, but this isn't branded with their brand yet. If they, if they like it, then they'll uh, get it produced and with their own brand stock on it. Mm. Rex, how you doing? <laughs> If you're in Australia, you can go to a local chemist, look for Floridix. What's it called again? Floridix. I'm going to write this down because I'm not, um, <laughs> I've been like, uh, I've had this lingering sickness. Floridix. Panadol is useless. <laughs> Never does much for me. Okay, so I've managed to burn this a little bit. So okay, I'm just going to turn it back up, add a little bit more oil to it. But the rice is perfect, okay guys? There you go. You can't really tell, obviously. Okay. Mix this around. And for this, I'm going to use actual coconut cream, alright? So all of this is just onion and garlic. You can add some lemongrass, you know, I might too. Lemongrass just adds kind of like a lemongrassy flavor, if you know what I mean. But if you don't have it, you can leave it out, all right? So I've got this minced lemongrass. Okay, I always say fresh is best, but um, uh, this is frozen minced lemongrass, which is convenient, all right? And you can buy this if you live in Australia and you live near Asian communities, you can buy this. This is a big bag. Okay, it literally says frozen chopped lemongrass. Um, and it will be in the freezer section of your Asian grocery store. But because lemongrass tends to be used by Southeast Asians, and Southeast Asian, uh, Southeast, Southeast Asia, in case you don't know, consists of countries like Malaysia, where I'm from, um, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, uh, Singapore, Burma, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and Brunei. All right, I hope I haven't missed anyone out. Um, but our our cuisines are basically more in alignment with each other than with like countries farther apart, like Japan or Korea or China, I guess, to some extent. All right. So if you're looking for ingredients like lemongrass, your best bet would to would be to pick it up from a store that caters to those sort of communities, all right? So sometimes you may struggle in Chinatown. You may stand a better chance of finding lemongrass in Thai town if you're here in Sydney. So add it. <coughs> so it's quite pale in spite of the um, paprika. And now I want, I want to ultimately create like a sweet, sour, salty, mixture okay not too salty because a lot of the saltiness will come from the ikambalus the the dry anchovy all right so i'm going to put a bit of, bit of chicken powder in here the chicken powder if you've seen my previous broadcast is basically like granulated stock cubes all right um but nicer we agents use it a lot in our cooking uh the chef no taste buds <laughs> Vitamin C is six components item and you need some fruits to compose it. Huh. Someone was saying the other day that vitamin C doesn't help with your cold. Okay, 
The next thing I'm going to add for the sourness is tamarind, okay? This is in a concentrate form, so you can buy this in a jar like this, again, from your Asian grocery store. And tamarind, just like lemongrass, is used predominantly in Southeast Asia, okay? So if you go to a Japanese grocery store, you probably may not find it. Um, if you go to a grocery store run by someone from China, you may struggle to find it as well, depending on who they, you know, who they um, service, okay? So tamarind adds the sourness. If you don't have that, you can use lemon juice here, okay, guys? Um, and I buy this in a ready form in a jar, but you can actually buy it in, pu in a purer form, which is in a, um, in a block, right? And then you can actually um, s um, basically break up the block and simmer it in some hot water till it falls apart and then strain it. The block will consist of tamarind uh, pulp with the... Uh, the seeds or the husk in them all right so you have to sift it out after that this just saves you all the work okay so tamarind it's got the sourness now I want to add the sugar all right so this is just regular good old white sugar and the chicken powder will add the saltiness to it okay so now let's throw in the sliced onion this down a little bit because it's quite thick. It really depends on um, <coughs> the difference between this and what I used to sell at my restaurant is that this one has coconut cream, coconut milk in it, all right? Um, there are different versions of the ikan bilis sambal. Some of them don't have coconut cream. Some of them, like the sambal, is almost like a chili sauce. Like it's quite thick and it's like, you know, you just serve it as a side little condiment. Others have it more as a dish, right, with the coconut milk and, 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 and like, you know, having like a lot of sauce with it, and this is what I'm making. Um, and part of the reason I'm making it this way is because Noah, my little Down syndrome five-year-old, he likes, he likes eating rice a lot, but he needs the sauce to go with it, okay? Okay, the flavor is pretty spot on. Um, before I add the ikan bilis, I'm always inclined to think, oh, it needs more saltiness, but uh, you have to be mindful that this will add the saltiness to it, okay? So just sprinkle it in. And this is why you can see the fact I'm folding the dried, the crispy anchovy in. This is why you can see it doesn't need to be crispy because it's gonna go soft anyway. Okay, I'm just gonna add some water to this. And you can still add more salt to it after the fact but just like I said be mindful of the fact that the, uh, the, the, the dried anchovies will be a little bit salty okay so let's just bring it back up to heat so if, um, from a visual perspective this should be a little bit redder in color but like I said I, I'm not using I'm barely using any chili in here Okay, flavor-wise, it's actually pretty good. Um, I might just put a touch more chili because I can't taste any chili in it at all. Um, where is it? Okay, so there's the chili crush from Thailand that I say is very, very spicy. Okay, so I'm just sprinkling some of it over. But yeah, if you have fresh chilies, that would be a good way to go but fresh chilies for whatever reason this time they use just super expensive and also very hard to get a hold of as well if you live in my part of sydney which for whatever reason doesn't seem to have a lot of asian shops um, you have to buy your chilies at your western greengrocer or at woolworths or something like that and they sell chilies by like you know pack of four or something like that when we asians buy chilies we buy them in like you know one kilo amounts sort of thing so. okay okay so this is pretty spot on let's um serve it up see a lot of my Hey, Sammy. <laughs> Jackie, please, more about your restaurant. Do you have act like Gordon Ramsay to control it? 
this as a any person put it. You know, I, I you know, in all honesty, Piggy, thanks for following. In all honesty, I ran my restaurant like a hobby almost. It's al it was almost like a uh, cool club, you know, with my staff because you know, I had a lot of trouble finding staff. So my restaurant was run by me um, and staffed by a lot of uni students, okay, university overseas university students. Because for whatever reason, I don't know where you are, like, uh, but for whatever reason. Um, there's a website called Gumtree here in Australia where we where I used to advertise like vacancies and all that. Uh, in the 15 years or so that I was running my business full on, um, every time I put out an ad uh, for staff, um, it was like overseas students and migrant workers essentially who applied for work. All right, in the whole time I advertised, I had one Caucasian actually apply for a job and also actually show up for the interview because then there were some who would apply um, just because they were on social security and one of the requirements of remaining on social security is their ability to prove to their case officers that they're actively looking for work okay so they'll send me an email and apply for a job with their cv and yet when it comes uh, time to the interview they won't show up right but but the, the actual act of applying for it actually is apparently sufficient for them to continue receiving like benefits all right yeah so basically my my staff consisted of like a ragtag team of people who never worked in a kitchen because you'd be surprised a lot of these asian students studying here in australia have never had to do any manual work back in their home countries because they usually come from fairly privileged you know backgrounds right so i had to make things really simple for them and there are a few exceptions um you know but you know these were people with like master's degrees and whatever you know um and they'll be working like up to 20 hours a week which is the visa like limit you know as to how many hours they could work and then when it came to exam time all of them will take time off at the same time when it came like a uh, holiday time a lot of them will go back to their home countries at the same time so i was all the time i was always uh, short staffed and and struggling with it so i treated my staff really really well but um yeah no i wasn't uh, gordon ramsay at all i have nobody working for me <laughs> But yeah, that's why in a lot of ways, now that I've given up my restaurant, it's actually a huge, like, you know, I always tell people, and it's true, I gave up my restaurant because of Noah. Noah was sick in hospital for about uh, seven months, right? Uh, when he was, was born, I gave it up when he came out. But in all reality, it was more of a blessing than a, <laughs> than a loss to have to give it up. <laughs> okay. So let me just give this a rinse and then we're going to cook the fish uh, curry, all right? And the Aussie girl who did show up for the interview, she she worked out really well, right? And the reason why she actually needed a job was because the banks were chasing her up for uh, defaulting on her loan because she um, she was at the time the like the youngest person to take up a uh, an Ella uh, Bache, however you pronounce it, Ella Bache franchise, like a beauty salon franchise, right? She was like about 20, 21 years old and she took out a franchise and she, you know, found like a premium uh, city location for her salon. She was paying like $5,000 a week in rent and then she basically got in over her head in terms of managing her uh, business and she had to default on her loan and the bank started chasing her. <laughs> so she really, really needed a job, <laughs> but she was a lovely girl. Um, <laughs> okay, so fish curry okay let's just do a very basic one so I've got the onion again 
and the garlic. I'm gonna mix them two together. I shouldn't, you know what? I'm gonna take out the oil. I always forget to do this. I tell people, don't put the oil until after the uh, onion has dried up. Okay, because we wanna fry up the onion. Because the onion has got a lot of moisture, okay? You want to dry fry it till some of the moisture is um, released, and then you add the oil in. And with the fish curry, you can add an, uh, you know, a number of different spices to it individually, or you can just use a uh, curry mixture, okay? And if you are Malaysian, or you check out the curry powder spice mixtures, that are from Malaysia, you'll find that the generally they fall into three broad categories. They'll have like a fish curry powder, uh, meat curry powder, and uh, rendang curry powder. Okay, there are other varieties as well, but generally when we buy curry powder, we don't just go and look for curry powder. We look for, depending on what we're cooking, we'll look for those. Okay, and like a fish curry powder just has like a different mix of spices compared to a meat curry powder, compared to a rendang curry powder. They're like you know, you, you can mix and match. You can use a fish curry powder in your chicken curry and vice versa. Okay, so it's not, not a hard and fast rule. It just means that it reflects the kind of curry flavors that we Malaysians are used to eating. Um, let me look for it. <coughs> I rearranged my... Um, to figure out where I put everything. Okay, there you go. Have this right one. What's this say? Soup curry powder. Okay. This is koruma curry powder. This is uh, just chili powder, which I can add some to the dish as well. one says seafood curry powder all right this will do there's actually for whatever reason this particular brand Mat City which is quite popular in Malaysia um, produces not just fish curry powder but also seafood curry powder so yeah it smells oh look it's got a um, it's got uh, bay leaves inside of it okay so that's quite interesting it's my first time using it okay so just throwing that in And adding this in as well so like I say guys um, don't get stressed out about the different types of curry powder when it says fish curry powder it doesn't actually mean it contains any fish or you know nor does meat curry powder contain any meat all right they're all vegetarian but um, it just reflects on the kind of flavors you want to achieve with them and when I used to have my restaurants I used to do my lamb curry using a fish curry powder and it was one of my most popular dishes at the restaurant all right so you can mix and match okay just in goes the oil because it's actually quite dry thanks to the curry powder absorbing a lot of the um, moisture from the onion so you just want to fry this up but you can do like a really mild fish curry just using a uh, turmeric which gives it the yellow color um, and you know a bit of coriander 
and some galangal if you want. All right, so uh, the curry powder just kind of like simplifies life for you. But if you happen to have those spices lying around in your pantry but no curry powder, just use those instead. I'm going to go away and sneeze, I think. So again, you want to actually fry this up till the oil separates. And you can smell the uh, nice aromatic flavors from your curry spices. I'm going to put away the paprika. And again, if you want to add some lemongrass, you can do that. So if you've got fresh whole lemongrass, you can actually just stick the whole stalk in there. Well, <coughs> you can tie the stalk in the knot, right? But just bruise the head of the um, bulb just to bring out, help bring out the flavors. Okay, and then at the end of your cooking, you can dish out the lemongrass and throw it out, okay? When you put it in as in its minced form, basically you get like a, it thickens up your curry as well, sort of thing. So that's really the main point of difference between using a whole stalk that you fish out afterwards once all the flavors are infused into your curry versus like actually mixing it into the curry paste mixture like this here. Yeah, so by the way guys, um, because I'm multi-streaming this on YouTube as well, um, if you're watching this anywhere except Twitch, right guys, um, I can only monitor the chat comments in Twitch, alright? And to get to my Twitch channel, just visit uh, JackieM.live or twitch.tv slash JackieMFood, alright? Um, and that's how you can actually ask me questions that I can answer and also that's how you can be in the running for any giveaways that I happen to be offering at any point in time, all right? Because uh, you have to actually show up in my Twitch audience to be able to uh, be in the running for it. Okay, so this is burning a little bit. This is not the ideal kind of like a wok for uh, frying in all honesty. I'm just going to add some water to this. My mom tends to use this kind of wok for cooking her curries, but when I cook my curries, I like to use uh, non-stick woks myself, right? Do you think I got ketchup manis putting sugar in regular soy sauce? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I think I th ketchup manis is less salty than uh, regular soy sauce. Um, try putting um, palm sugar in it, right? And you might have to thicken up your soy sauce as well. Um, what you would, what I would personally do if I were trying to make ketchup manis, use depending on how concentrated your soy sauce is, I would add some water, some palm sugar, simmer it, and then thicken it with like potato starch or corn, even corn starch might do. All right, that's how I would imagine doing it. <coughs> in all honesty, um, ketchup manis is used a lot in Indonesian cooking, not so much in Malaysian cooking, right? Um, But it's used sometimes in some Malay cooking in Malaysia. Alright, so this is like two halves of a fish. This is either bar I think this is barramundi actually, which is an Australian fish. Okay, there is pseudo frozen because it was in the freezer until a couple of days ago and I transferred it into the fridge.
and I'm gonna add a little bit of the uh, sourness, okay? Fish curry always lends itself to a little bit of sourness, so. But this is optional, so a little bit of the tamarind in there. Some of the chicken powder again. Uh, a little bit of sugar. Impulse sniper, thanks for following. Okay. It's about two teaspoons of sugar in there. All right. Um, if you were Thai, you'll put a lot more sugar, all right? The Thais tend to like more intense flavors in their curries. The Malaysians tend to like the curries more distinctly savory. If you're Indian, you wouldn't put any sugar in it at all. So these are the uh, little nuances uh, with our curries with all these different ethnic groups, all right? Okay, coconut cream in here. Okay, let's cover this and let it simmer for a few minutes. Uh, here we go. And I'm going to grab a drink because I'm suffering here with my nose. <laughs> but if anyone else has any ideas, any other Asians, cookie if you're around, got any ideas for kitap manis, how to make your own kitap manis, I, I should grab a bottle of kitap manis if I've got it and read the ingredients list. Hang on, where are they? Jeff the Monk, thanks for following. I don't have kitap manis, but I have this here, which is what we use a lot in Asian cooking. And apparently uh, Americans can't find it anywhere. Okay, I was just, uh, some Facebook commenters were saying they can't find it anywhere in America, but this we use a lot, okay? Especially if you're, what you're cooking is uh, Chinese based, okay? This is similar to kitap manis, but it's darker and less sweet, okay? It's, la it's darker, thicker, and less sweet. And where's the ingredients list? It doesn't say. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Uh, caramel, salt, and permitted flavoring substance. <laughs> I don't know what they mean by caramel. <laughs> but this is this is called cooking caramel nowadays, but in most Asian recipes it's actually referred to as thick soy sauce, okay? Um, and in Chinese actually it literally we call it uh, black soy sauce. It's very confusing, but I think for branding purposes they decided to call themselves uh, cooking caramel at some point, okay? So, uh, but yeah, a lot of people confuse this for kitchup manis and you can probably get away with using kitchup manis for some of the recipes that call for this. But keep in mind, like I said, this is a lot thicker and darker and less sweet, okay? So you have to adjust your recipe. Yes, kitchup manis crunchy. Are you familiar with it? Jeff the Monk, is that golden perch? Ah, see, you recognize silver perch maybe. I thought I wasn't sure if it was a, a silver perch or barramundi because I'm very bad with fish names. <laughs> I bought one of each and threw them both in the freezer and I took them out to defrost and I wasn't sure which one it was I grabbed. I thought this was barramundi in all honesty, but it may be a perch. But I've never seen golden perch. It's uh, usually usually they sell silver perch at the Asian fish shop, which is where I buy my fish. Okay, cover it and let it simmer for a couple more minutes and let me clear out a few more things. <coughs> I'm gonna turn up the heat some more. Yep, it's silver perch. Golden perch, also known as yellow belly, is a popular Aussie catch. Ah, I have, ah, oh, it's Patty and thanks for following. I have heard of a, uh, uh, yellow belly actually. So yellow belly is actually golden perch, is it? Okay, cool.
cool. That's good to know. Uh, like I said, I'm really, really bad with fish names, and it doesn't help that different countries call them by different names as well. But uh, okay, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, I have seen yellow belly at the Asian stores, but I've uh, never seen it labeled as a uh, golden, golden perch. Is it hard to catch a silver perch though? This is quite a large one. And they cost about, here in Australia, they cost about, oh, about $16 per kilo, give or take, which is about 2.2 pounds. And um, in Malaysia, there's a popular, uh, northern part of Malaysia's place uh, as a state of Kelantan, and they're famous for their food. But I had a really nice fish curry, and they used tuna. All right. <laughs> Thanks for following. <laughs> uh, But the Asians usually, if you're Chinese Asian, you usually buy this kind of fish whole and then you steam it with ginger. And that was what I was going to do. But like I said, um, it's, it's half frozen and, and it's, you know, not fresh from the uh, store. So I thought curry will probably work better for this. Okay, and you can add veggies to this as well. Uh, I don't have any sitting around. Um, you can add something like eggplant or what we call ladies' fingers, right? Um, tomato, if you want. The tomato will add some like um, uh, sourness to it as well, right? Uh, and what else can you add? Uh, tomatoes. Uh, you can add snake beans and that sort of stuff, okay? So let's cover this, cook it a little bit more. And I want to boil the eggs, or should I boil the eggs? Uh, yeah, boil the eggs. <coughs> Got some water in here. Just boil a couple of eggs just for the presentation at the end. I'm going to throw in some curry leaves just because I've got some lying around. All right. The, these were in my freezer. So if you have curry leaves and you can't use it all up, just throw it in the freezer or dry it in the sun. Um, but usually you can throw the whole stalk in, but it's also easier just to kind of like pull the leaves off the stalk and just sprinkle it in like this. Okay. And it just adds like a nice little peppery flavor to your, to your curry dishes. Iceberg fish curry at winter, who can even resist it? I know, right? <laughs> Especially if you live in Melbourne, which I don't. <laughs> it's like spring in Sydney, and I hear it's been storming in uh, Melbourne or whatever. I like to make fun of Melbourne weather. So uh, if you're from Melbourne, <laughs> you know what it's, what's in store. <laughs> okay, let's cover this some more. Taste it. Okay. So the flavor is pretty spot on already. Yeah, again, guys, um, I do regular giveaways. Um, and I don't know when the next one's going to be, but I do have a bunch of Lenovo mini speakers and Rode microphones um, to give away still. And I, I, you know, we just did a draw like uh, on my last broadcast, which was a Saturday night. So um, two different people won uh, one of each of those. Um, I've had some people who won both, all right, just by virtue of them hanging around. <laughs> by virtue of the fact that there aren't that many people to draw from. So, uh, yeah, my next broad, uh, yeah, we'll see anyway. So when I'm going to do the draw. But if you're watching this, like I said, if you're watching this from anywhere else, um, hop over to Twitch and follow me there because that's the only way your name can enter the draw, okay? By virtue of the software that I'm using to do the um, draws with, okay? So my Twitch URL again is just um, twitch.tv slash Jackie M Food or if you can't remember all that, just go to Jackie M dot live and that will take you to my Twitch channel page and, um, and also Twitch is where you can interact with me live as well, okay? Because I can't monitor the chats on any 
any other platform. So again, yeah, Sophia Princess, thanks for following. So let's check if the fish is done. And culturally, depending on, uh, you know, Malaysia is a multicultural country. It sounds really cliche, but I'm Chinese and born in Malaysia, as are about 30, 35% of Malaysians. Um, but the predominant race is the, uh, the Malay race, okay? They make up about 66%, give or take, of the population. And then we've got about 10, 15% who are Indians from southern India. So depending on which ethnic group you hail from, uh, you would treat your uh, ingredients a little bit differently, okay? The Malays tend to like to kill, like they like to uh, kill their fish like three times over. We Chinese like the fish to be fairly delicate and just cooked, okay? That's why the Chinese like the steamed fish dishes and all that. Um, so if you go to Malaysia and you eat grilled fish, you'll tend to find uh, that you know, it might taste overcooked to you, okay? And the Indians will put a lot more spices, okay? You saw me put that sachet of curry powder in there, which is equivalent to about two tablespoons. The Indians will probably double or triple that amount, okay? They like the curries like very, very intensely spicy, like as in spicy, not chilli hot, but, well, that too. <laughs> but spicy as in, uh, like, infused with a lot of spice flavours. What's the name of the software you use to draw the names? The animation is... <laughs> it's called Lock Tools. L -A, uh, L -A -C, um How many H's? Uh, where is it? L-A-C-double-H Tools. And it's freeware. <coughs> and it's actually created by a coder who is a live streamer himself. All right. And that was recommended to me by Kenji K, who's one of my mods. Um, and he got it from Hamiltoons, who's one of the channels on Twitch as well. So if you guys want to check out Hamiltoons channel, he is actually a cartoonist and he was actually responsible for doing my emotes for my, um, for my channel as well, right? So basically, Kay saw it on Hamiltoons channel and um, got me onto it. Okay, so that's the fish curry. Let's dish that up. And here I thought I was the last person to learn anything about Twitch. I figured you guys would all know all this. Okay. Let me see if I can get some uh, something to pretty this up with. I'm going to look for some uh, random chili or whatever. Okay, so this is a big giant chili I bought uh, in Cabramatta like about three weeks ago and it's, it's still alive but uh, it's got no heat in it at all, at all like you can't taste you wouldn't tell that it was chili unless you were saw it okay so chili and I've got some spring onion This is the fish curry. I don't know if people get weirded out at seeing like the fish head. <laughs> but yeah, in Asia, if you eat fish, you get the whole fish, all right? You don't just get nicely filleted fish that's been deboned. Um, and that doesn't look anything like fish at all. Move this. So we're gonna slice up some um, cucumber. I 
iceberg. <laughs> okay, so um, very, very traditionally in Malaysia, nasi lemak, when I was growing up as a kid, um, there used to be a guy on a scooter with a um, kind of like a big aluminum um, container on the back of it and he would drive around to all the villages and you would know as a kid you know like you know different people show up at different times of the morning with their wares right their their street food and this guy would sell nasi lemak and it would all be wrapped in banana leaves okay so they look like little pyramids and basically you'll have like you wouldn't have the fish curry in there because they're very very cheap so you'll have like the rice with the egg with the sambal um, and with a couple of slices of cucumber wrapped in banana leaf and you buy how many packets you want I, I think there was like 20 cents or something like that a packet and then like uh, and they'll have like different ways to let them know let you know that they've arrived in your village all right they'll either have like a clapper or like a, a horn or something like that so nasi lemak is one of those things we eat it for breakfast okay so if you go to Malaysia and you're looking for nasi lemak at dinner, you may struggle to, depending on where you go, right? If you're looking for the breakfast nasi lemak, you may find that, you know, the shop's already packed up and gone and another shop's taken its space to cook uh, dinner food and that sort of stuff. But yeah, those are some of the memories of Malaysia from like uh, childhood. But that's what we used to do, but like kind of like listen out for who's coming and then buy noodles or buy like steam buns and that sort of stuff from all these different hawkers that show up in our village okay so boiled egg just stick it in some water to cool it down a little bit while i just wipe this down and put it away okay so you saw the fish curry took like barely like look it took it it, it can take less time than what it took me all right because i wasn't paying attention to it but literally you can cook that up in like 20 minutes okay so fish because it cooks up very very quickly does not take long at all so let's put this away okay hit a plate And if you want, like, um, if you want to, like, wrap it in banana leaf, this is what you would do, all right? So you get a bowl. Well, to be fair, they don't bother doing it. But when I was doing it in my restaurant and I used to sell these nasi lemak in banana leaf parcels, you would mold the banana leaf uh, parcel this way, all right? So you put some of this dried anchovy in there and you throw in a couple of slices of cucumber. You sell it for like I used to sell this at my market stalls for like seven bucks or something like that okay um, put in the sambal but keep in mind the sambal I used was not saucy like this so this might not work out okay And then you put the rice on top and you pack it in okay and if you have your banana leaf you'll have the banana leaf with the dull side up right I don't have any banana leaf on me so basically you put it on the banana leaf dull side up okay like a square well a rectangular shape like this okay flip it up like this and then you fold it up and like basically you fold up both sides this way and then fold down the sides and it gives you a pyramid and then basically you get like a thing like this when you open it up okay i'll do a nicer one so that's what i would sell at my market store wrapped up banana leaves until banana leaves got ridiculously expensive all right but at the 
restaurant, you know, we would actually again would mold the rice into a nice rice shaped um, thing. Okay, just tip it over. Let me change the bowl. Let me change the plate. And we used to have like uh, more condiments to go with it. All right, guys. So I, I used to make this pickle, what's called acha, that goes with this as well. I've done a live broadcast on the pickle on Facebook Live in the past, but I won't bother doing it today because it's a little bit involved. Okay, let's just clean this up a little bit. On. Yeah, this used to have a boiled egg in the middle as well. So this egg is a little bit soft. It's too soft for me to have it. Let's just put the whole thing in there. Armada, um, when you go to the hairdressers, what do you ask them to do? Love your hair. <laughs> um, I look the the top takes a while to grow out, right? So I just asked him um, to use the number one razor on sides and back. That's it. <coughs> I keep it very simple nowadays. I just go to what's called uh, Just Cuts here in Australia, which is like a all they do is just about very like you know you just walk in and walk out in 15 minutes and that's how i like it um i used to pay a lot more for my head um but uh yeah i can't be bothered nowadays so just number one sides and back and like uh sometimes just uh, kind of like layer the top a little bit sort of thing but yeah basically keep the length on the top <laughs> hey Kay, how you doing <laughs> Did you ever cook cucumbers that are eaten fresh or marinated here or we do make salads and pickles from them? I live in Siberia, have summer now and tons of cucumbers. Ah, <laughs> yeah, we do actually, we do stir fry cucumber with garlic and uh, a little bit of salt. So uh, that was quite uh, like kind of like a comfort food. So, we'll, But we'll peel the skin first and cut them into slices and then stir fry them. Try it. Uh, you can put oyster sauce in it too if you've got oyster sauce. But otherwise, garlic and salt. Um, stir fried cucumber is actually really nice to go with rice. <laughs> Could be better but alive. Add some magic, put peanuts as I know it is needed. Ah, you know what? Uh, yeah, actually, usually you just reminded me. It usually does have peanuts with this. Um, I was trying to think of what's missing on this dish. Okay, so usually we will have like uh, peanuts on the skin, roasted um, with this, okay? And like I said, we would actually have, uh, well, nice to have a pickle with it. And then like, you know, the curry. So this is the fish curry. And this is the simple nasi lemak, basically. Um, like I said, this is usually more intensely red in color, okay? And then you would have the uh, more anchovies on the side like this as well. Okay, so this is what we call nasi lemak in Malaysia. What happened to you, Kay? <laughs> How's your foot? <laughs> oh, there you go. I think I'll stop cooking because I'm, <laughs> I'm dying here with my cough. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys got any other questions you want to hit me up with? So my hair, yeah, number one razor, front, uh, back and sides, leave the top, and sometimes just kind of like uh, 
thin down the top, top if it gets quite thick. And I, 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 yeah, my hair grows out really quickly. That healed a, that healed a while ago. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. So what's wrong with you now? <laughs> um, if anyone uses Restream for your uh, channel, right? Let talk to me, all right? Because I'm I, I'm trying to figure out some technical issues with it. Because this is the second time, like I said, I tried to use Restream to simultaneously live stream to um, YouTube, Twitch, as well as Facebook, and it seems to be that fail, uh, Facebook is causing a lot of static, um, and it's impacting all my streams, sort of thing. So if you've got any tips, let me know mental issues ah okay <laughs> see i told you to get rid of your ghost <laughs> um yeah guys so don't forget right if you're watching anywhere else you need to follow me on twitch if you want to interact with me at all because I, I don't read the comments on other platforms all right and i especially i have a little bit of a ptsd with youtube comments every time it says oh, there's a new youtube comment i i leave it to my assistant to check them out and filter them for me because i've been heavily heavily abused on youtube before i mean not that not that it like not that it's soul destroying but it's just annoying to have to go to youtube and just see yet another one makes another one uh, another person make some snarky comment about you and whatever sort of things so i'm just tired i'm just over it um but yeah uh, so follow me on twitch which is uh twitch.tv slash jackie and food and like i said you have to watch this on twitch if you want your to be in the draw for when I do drawings, okay? So I do drawings at least once a week. Uh, I give random stuff away, but the main ones I'm giving away at the moment are the, um, I'm gonna show it to you guys again. The main ones I'm giving away are the Video Mic Me uh, microphone from Rode right and i've got like i said i've got about five left of this okay i think i've got about five left I'm, I'm thinking of actually saving one to give away as a charity giveaway but i'll talk to you guys about it beforehand and then i've got these lenovo mini speakers right that hook up to your uh, mobile device or even your laptop or whatever else okay very very cool little giveaway so the video mic me hooks up to your iPhone, iPad, or Android, okay? So these are professional microphones here. Hey, Remy, how you doing? I finally got in front of a laptop. Oh, cool. <laughs> Don't laugh at my problems. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, right here. Well, you, can, you know where to find me, Kay. I'm on Discord. Yeah, Discord, guys. I never announce about Discord except on Twitch, all right? But yeah, uh, go and join my Discord server. That's where you can find me when I'm not live, okay? I'm not that chatty, all right? But if you've got any questions, just hit me up. Um, <coughs> because I've got a busy life. <laughs> I don't hang out on Discord and say, hey, guys, what's happening sort of thing. But like, yeah, hit me up if you've got any questions. And there are a number of different channels on my Discord server. There's a food talk channel where you can actually ask me uh, you can ask me to do specific recipes or ask me for you know uh, questions about food or just challenge me on something all right and I'll be more than happy to do that I've done that a couple of times I did a New York cheesecake last week um, which um, which was fabulous by the way uh, shrimmy thanks for following <laughs> those emotes oh what's <laughs> not that chatty <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, um, and what else is there? Uh, yeah, and every Saturday night I do the campfire uh, stories. If you've got any stories you want me to read out, right? There's a stories channel on my Discord server as well. Um, I like stories that are first person or someone or second person accounts, all right? I don't want you to, um, you know, if you're a frustrated novelist or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I want true stories in other words okay or as, as as much you know verifiably true as possible uh but basically creepy stories because we like to freak ourselves out on Saturday night all right um <coughs> yeah but anyway yeah great to see you guys again uh Kay, Remy and all you regulars and everyone else is uh, joining me for the first time to just play dead by daylight on a Saturday night what what is that um, yeah, Kay, if you, uh, since you're actually, uh, um, who's that? Sammy is going to send me some notes about, um, 
night bots, right? But we've had some problems with the uh, volume of the music playing on night bots with the uh, with the song requests last Saturday night. So we ended up killing music. So <laughs> until we sort it out, my campfire stories will be uh, without any music playing in the background. All right. So anyway, right here. Uh, thanks again, guys. Uh, yeah, so I will be live again on Wednesday. Sorry about my current situation. I'm struggling with my trying to stifle my cough and I'm sniffling and all that sort of stuff. So it's a little bit of a weird broadcast for me. Why did you direct that to me? That Well, because you're the, you know, you're the pro. All right. <laughs> I <just coughs> uh, uh, Sammy is going to send me some notes about Nightbot to see if we can figure it out. Okay, but that's it. I just thought that, you know, since K is like meant to be like super mod or whatever, that you might have some ideas. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, again, don't forget to look me up on Discord. The, uh, the invite you can find at bits.ly slash Discord Jackie. All right, all lowercase. And I'll see what I can come up with. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Yeah, hope you're doing okay, Kay. But yeah, you know where to find me if you've got a if you want to talk. All right. <laughs> Same with everyone else, okay? Um, yeah, you can send me a whisper, you can uh, find me on Discord or whatever. Otherwise you wanna email me, it's Jackie, J A C K I E at Jackie M dot com dot A U. And I will see you on uh Friday at five thirty PM. Speaking of which I am considering changing my broadcast times all right um, um I'm, I'm looking at changing after this week to instead of 12 30 mondays and fridays and 5 30 on wednesday i'm looking to change them to just 12 and 5 okay uh, so 12 o'clock monday and friday and five o'clock on wednesdays just gives me a bit more time so i'm not rushing um you know, at the end of it, because I have to go and run off and pick up Noah from childcare and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, thank you so much for following me and for watching my stream. And don't forget to spread the word. Uh, but don't forget uh, giveaways. Um, I might do a yeah, I might do a giveaway this Wednesday night, but uh, it may not be one of the microphones, okay? Because I want to hold that off till later in the week, since I only just gave that away in my last broadcast. Uh, half an hour earlier, yeah, basically. Half an hour earlier. Uh, I think yeah yeah let me know what you think if you think it's a good idea but it just this is kind of like yeah it's a little bit taxing on my schedule to kind of like have to rush off on especially on my friday broadcast sort of thing but yeah okay right here thank you guys and i will see you again ciao